It is not bipartisan. It is collusion between the parties who can only agree on spending money we well, don't have. It's outrageous. So, Congressman, one of, the, one of the guys who struck this deal was the senior senator from the state of New York, Chuck Schumer. Are you calling Senator Schumer a drunken sailor? We have a disagreement on that. I do not believe that reaching agreement at the expense of our fiscal uh, stability is wise. And I think it is far past time, in the wake of the tax cut bill, when we, when we blew a $1.5 trillion new hole on top of the $10 trillion we're already going to take in debt over the next decade, when we blew that new hole into the debt and the deficit, we cannot throw $500 billion in unpaid for spending on top of that. I say that as a Democrat, and I say that as someone who also thinks we should, we should deal with the Dreamers issue mm -hmm. now and not keep kicking it down the road. So I'm a no, and other, other Democrats will make their own decision. I have great respect for Senator Schumer. He's mm -hmm. in a tough job, and he has got a commitment on the Senate side to get a vote, which is a lot more than Paul Ryan has done in the House. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't have anything but respect for Senator Schumer, but I'm going a different direction on this. Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll tell you what Nancy Pelosi just said about this spending deal next. And Vice President Pence talking tough on North Korea as South Korea plans to meet with Kim Jong-un's sister for lunch. The U.S. on a two-year bipartisan spending bill to vote on it. The big question now is, will it pass? This is what the House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi said really just moments ago. I have an unease with it and hope that the speaker will man up and decide that we in the House can also have what uh, Mitch McConnell uh, 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 guaranteed in, in the Senate, a vote, a vote on the floor. I'm pleased with the product. I'm not pleased with the process. So you will vote for it? No, I won't. Nancy Pelosi's a no vote. I had a Democratic congressman moments ago tell me he's a no vote and a Republican senator about 20 minutes ago tell me he's not sure he's going to vote yes either. CNN Sunlin Serfati on Capitol Hill. We're getting these very public no's, Sunlin, but you still get a sense there's confidence it will pass. Absolutely, John. Uh, certainly Nancy Pelosi making her views of this bill uh, yesterday known when she held that eight hour speech on the House floor. She is against it. But that said, uh, things are on track to get this wrapped up today to avoid a shutdown at midnight tonight. But certainly there are many steps that this has to go through up here on Capitol Hill today to make that officially happen. The Senate will be convening in the next half hour, 1030 Eastern time. At some point in the early afternoon, they will hold a vote on that bipartisan massive two year budget bill that they were able to negotiate. That will pass through the Senate. That gets kicked over to the House side. Now there, it certainly does face a much steeper climb. In the last 24 hours, we've been hearing really from two groups are unhappy unhappy with this bill. As Nancy Pelosi said there, there are many House Democrats that are unhappy that this bill does not include a DACA fix, unhappy and want more assurances from the House Speaker that he will hold a, a vote and a debate over immigration on the House floor. And then you also have the flip side, many deficit hawks, House conservatives who are unhappy about the substantial ads that this bill potentially has on the deficit. All that said, the House Speaker, notably this morning, really striking a confident tone. Here's what he said in the last hour on the Hugh Hewitt radio show. Do you have the votes in the House of Representatives to pass what looks like a done deal in the Senate? I think we will. I, I feel good. It's just it, it, part of it depends on the Democrats. This is a bipartisan bill. Um, it's going to need bipartisan support. We are going to deliver our share of support. I feel very good about Republicans. And that really backs up what aides up here on Capitol Hill have been telling us, John, that uh, despite all these public, as you said, no votes, uh, there is a good contingent of people from uh, those unhappy House Democrats, the unhappy uh, House conservatives that will ultimately end up voting for this uh, deal. And that's certainly uh, a remarkable and notable statement from the House Speaker this morning going into potential votes tonight uh, before that midnight deadline that he's feeling like he's in a good spot. John. All right, Sullivan Serfati, we will watch this closely all day and maybe even all night. Joining me now, CNN political commentators Angela Ryan, Alice Stewart, and CNN political analyst Jackie Kucinich. Angela, I'm going to start with you because we just heard from Nancy Pelosi, the, the ranking Democrat in the House, saying she's a no vote. Sean Patrick Maloney told me he's a no vote. Liberals, particularly in the House right now, they're not happy about this. No, and I think we have to rely on... Um what folks have said or what folks have done more than what they've said. So this is, um, there have been now five short-term spending bills. 
that all we're supposed to be considering DACA. None of that has happened. So now we're supposed to take, we're supposed to rely on the words of the Senate that if you do this spending measure, this two-year bill, this two-year budget, we're going to consider immigration at a later time. We can't rely on those words. If you've, five other times, you haven't considered this bill or, you know, these people. I don't know how we got to a place where we are not considering the people that the policies impact. That is the big issue, and Democrats have to hold that line. I think Nancy Pelosi did a good job of doing that on the House floor, but it has to go beyond the pomp and circumstance into what really matters, and that's passing the legislation. And it's interesting. That's the line you're hearing from some Democrats, Alice. The line you're hearing from some Republicans, particularly the Freedom Caucus, and I heard it from John Kennedy, Senator from Louisiana a little while ago, is the spending here is out of control from the things they would like to see. This will drive up the deficit, pure and simple. Granted, the tax cut they all just voted overwhelmingly for, that will drive up the deficit as well, but this will even more. Sure, the Freedom Caucus is, is really strong on making sure that we don't pass a budget bill that adds to the deficit, and they're going to stay firm on that. With regard to the, the, the Democrats on this, I don't understand why they're going to die on the DACA Hill yet again. They should have learned last month that it didn't work for them. They need to separate uh, their immigration policies from this budget bill. Mm -hmm. Appropriations bills should be about appropriations and not policy. So I think what we, if we didn't learn anything else last month, let's focus on a, a big, a nice budget deal that people can agree on and let's deal with immigration. We still have time. We still mm -hmm. have uh, until March to, wor to worry about, Doc. I think we need to take one issue at a time and right now it's getting this budget passed before midnight. And that seems to be the Chuck Schumer calculation right now. Jackie Kucinich, while this debate is going on, and it will go on all day and into the night, there's this cloud of controversy over the White House. That I, I really, I, I got to say, this one surprised me, the way that General John Kelly, the chief of staff, has handled this. Rob Porter, these allegations of domestic abuse came out. Credible allegations. These two women on the record. There's a picture of one of his former wives with a black eye. There's another telling a story to cameras about how she was dragged out of the shower. And up until late yesterday, John Kelly was apparently arguing that Rod Porter, the staff secretary, should keep his job. I mean, John Kelly is in some hot water now. It's disturbing um, because initially there was uh, uh, they, they've tried to say he didn't know about it when, in fact, um, it's very unlikely that John Kelly did not know about these allegations against an aide that was so close to him. He's putting loyalty over these allegations. And, uh, you know, the fact that someone with this um, you know, alleged history of violence and credit, as you said, they're very credible allegations, was able to get so far in this White House, even when these, uh, there, there's reporting that um, a, a third woman went to counsel Don McGahn and also raised that the, raised that this was an issue. So uh, they had all of this evidence and chose to just promote him and to keep allowing him to rise in the White House. And it, it really, again, there's no other word for it than disturbing. Hey, I got to say, we always like to say this isn't an issue of politics, but really, this, this isn't an issue of this politics. This is an issue of you know? politics. <laughs> this isn't. This, this is just a moral question here. I mean, this is just a story of John Kelly, whether or not the, the White House chief of staff is comfortable with someone um, that this close to the president being accused of domestic abuse. But you have someone who is the president being accused of sexual harassment and sexual assault, like by multiple women. So are we that surprised that this is an issue in this house, in this White House? This is about the lifestyles of uh, the rich and ratchet, frankly. There was the lifestyles of the rich and famous back in the day, but these, this, these folks are problematic. They are privileged and they are used to consequences going past them, going right by them. So I'm not surprised by um, John Kelly's reaction to this. The, the president has some issues around this. Alice, is that yeah. fair? Sure. I, I think, look, uh, people in this White uh, looked at uh, Porter as someone with a, an impeccable pedigree and work performance in the White House that might, may have been stellar. That overshadowed their judgment and good judgment on what the right thing to do with regard to these domestic abuse charges. Look, he denies this happened. He says that uh, what is being reported isn't anywhere close to reality. But I think their stories and their claims far outweigh his mm -hmm. lame denials in this. And, and I think the White House 
this, this moment they heard about this should have let him go. And what's even more disturbing, John, you've talked to a few people, the fact that he had no full security clearance and he had access to these documents, that is a huge security risk for this country. And he is someone that is easily compromised by those who want to find someone who uh, has a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde personality. I think all of these issues need to be uh, seriously addressed. But more than anything, he doesn't need to uh, leave on his own terms. He needs to leave right now. And we have not heard that he is gone yet. We, the timeline moved up, so we were told today would be his last day. But as far as we know, you know, he hasn't walked out that door yet. So we're watching that very, very closely. Jackie, again, this is a Rob Porter, Porter story, accused of doing horrible, awful things. But this is also very much a John Kelly story, the chief of staff. A chief of staff, Jackie, who has been at the center of his own controversies. He was supposed to be the guy to clean up White House controversies. Yet, he has been a central figure, even maybe the causal figure for several issues lately, you know, calling uh, DACA uh, um, right. the immigrants, you know, lazy people saying they should get off the couch, suggesting, you know, making comments about the Civil War, the comments he made um, back when we learned about the soldier being killed in Africa, going after Frederica Wilson. Right. I, th there's a question of leadership here. There's a question of judgment here of someone that was supposed to be the adult in the room um and it, it, it will this lead to his ouster i don't know uh it, the president wasn't happy with him reportedly um over some of the comments that kelly made about him because once you know, of course when a staffer says something negative about the president it matters more than you know maybe some of these other issues that are more important uh so we'll have to wait and see but certainly there are is cause for concern i also have to bring up uh, the fact that um, Hope Hicks, who reportedly is uh, in, in a relationship yeah. recently with um, Rob Porter, uh, the fact that she was allowed to craft uh, this, uh, help craft this statement that the White House put on, that again, that is a lack of judgment. That is a lack of leadership. The fact that she was allowed to do that, I, it, that, sh that is, it, it's unprofessional. And um, again, I'm going to use that word again, it's disturbing. And John, right. if, if I can just Go say, ahead, I, I think she's a, she's a beautiful young woman. She can date whoever she wants to do. That's her personal business. But professionally, to Jackie's yes. point, when you're involved in a personal relationship with someone in a PR crisis, you should be the last one drafting a character mm. statement on his behalf right. when, when it comes to something so important. All right, Jackie, Angela, Alice, thank you all very, very much. Thank you. A key U.S. ally, South Korea, meeting with Kim Jong-un's sister, is this a sign of thawing relations, a sign that South Korea going its own way despite what the U.S. President Mike Pence on the ground in South Korea for the Winter Olympics? Another high-profile visitor, the sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. And while the vice president has been ratcheting up the rhetoric on the Kim regime, South Korea is taking the opposite approach. The South Korean president is sitting down with Kim's sister. They're going to lunch. Joining me now, CNN's Ivan Watson. Ivan, this is a huge development, a historic development on the Korean Peninsula to have the sister of the North Korean leader meeting with the South Korean president. That's right. I mean, they're, they're, they haven't gone to lunch yet. That's scheduled to take place on, on Saturday on the 10th. Uh, and instead, uh, the South Korean president's having dinner uh, with Vice President Pence and his wife uh, tonight. I think they're having chicken. Uh, but yeah, it's a big deal because the Kim dynasty has ruled North Korea since the Korean War, more than half a century, and this is the first member of that dynasty who will be coming south of the demilitarized zone. Uh, and she's part of a delegation that's actually led by the ceremonial head of state of North Korea. Uh, but the South Koreans are, are, are having to kind of thread a needle here. They have to balance uh, Vice President Pence on the one hand who is trying to put more pressure on the North Korean regime and try to say, hey, they're not as nice as they look right now just because they're participating in the in the Olympics, while at the same time trying to to uh, be make nice with the North Koreans uh, who have come down in large numbers. There are about 500 of them on the ground here. They're having concerts, they're having Taekwondo demonstrations, uh, and they're trying to charm the South Korean population. John? So, so, Ivan, on the eve of the opening ceremonies in South Korea, Pyeongchang, North Korea is displaying its own military power, a real show of force this morning. 
That's right, and that's where their charm offensive has kind of fallen flat. I talked to a, a South Korean who went to one of these North Korean concerts, and he said, yeah, I want to see their, their music, but this doesn't make me feel good knowing that they're having a military parade right before our Olympics. And they showed off some of their missiles, missiles that were launched as recently as last November. That shows you how fast this diplomatic, this Olympic diplomacy has moved forward. And, uh, you know, it's also kind of ironic seeing the North Koreans parade their missiles at a time when the Trump administration is discussing having its own military parade. That said, Vice President Pence, he keeps trying to pound this idea home. Uh, let's try to isolate North Korea and make it give up its nuclear weapons. Take a listen. All options are on the table. And the American armed forces and self-defense forces of Japan will be ready to defend our people and our way of life. To any who would threaten our people, our allies know this. Under this commander-in-chief, with the greatest fighting force in the world, the United States is ready. Ready to defend our homeland, defend our allies, anytime, anywhere. Biggest question here, John, what happens at the opening ceremony on Friday when you have Vice President Pence on one side of the stadium and you have Kim Jong-un's sister on the other side? The North Koreans insist there will be no meeting. John? We will watch it very closely, Ivan.